Out of the Ordinary Insights, brought to you by Investec Specialist Bank. Hi there, and welcome to Captains of Industry for this week. Uh, today we're talking to Carl Moyo, who is uh, with DuPont. He is the Regional Director for DuPont in Sub-Saharan Africa. Hi, Carl. Uh, DuPont is a big old American brand. I think a lot of people have heard of it, perhaps not so much in Africa as in the United States, obviously. I, what I know of it is, it's, as I say, a big brand. It's a grand old brand. It's uh, a science company, and it's big, and it's got global reach. So tell me, first of all, the context of the American parent company. Indeed, uh, DuPont is an old brand that has been around for a very, very long time. Um, you're right. Uh, DuPont has been around for 210 years, and um, it's a science company. That's what we do. We innovate. When you say science, do you mean laboratories, chemistry, what? In what way? The whole mix. We come up with new products, with new materials, with new ways of doing things. We bring science to the marketplace. We talk about what we call inclusive collaboration. This is where you come up with science to meet the challenges that people meet on a, meet on a daily basis. And some of these challenges may be challenges faced by the government, by academia, by private sector, by NGOs, and working together, we come up with solutions that make uh, that meet these challenges. Now I know it's a big company, but give me an idea of the scale of it. You know, your number of employees, revenue, and uh, the size of the market uh, that it's in. Dupont has got in excess of sixty thousand employees, and uh, we are present in more than ninety countries. We have in excess of thirty billion dollars of revenue annually, and uh, more interesting as well is that of that thirty odd billion dollars in revenue, 40% uh, comes from products that are less than five years old. Again, pointing out to the, uh, to the, to, 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 to the fact that we are a science company uh, engaged in continuous innovation on an ongoing basis. So a key thing for you is to <coughs> attract people who can do that for you. How do you attract the best people? Well, as you know, the war for talent is, 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 is there everywhere. You know, there, there, there used to be a time where there, there, there was a war for talent only in Europe or in North America. But I mean, we're facing it right in Africa as we try to expand across the region, as we try to enter new geographies, as we fight to get the best talent available, um, the competition is on. And, uh, but DuPont is unique in that being a science company which collaborates with many other players across different industries, it becomes very, very attractive. Being a science company that is focused on solving some of the most pressing challenges that Africa faces, challenges, mega challenges like the need to feed an ever-growing population. Well, well, let's go on to the African reach uh, of the company. So first of all, give me an idea of how, how big the African operation is in proportion to the global operation and roughly you know, where your areas of focus are at the moment in terms of geography. Well, the focus on Africa has really, really, uh, we've upped our focus on Africa in the past five years. Before that, we were predominantly just based in South Africa and uh, doing what we could in Africa. But we've come up with a strategy, it's what we call a 2020 strategy, to grow um, across the continent because we see that the future opportunities that Africa prevents, presents are huge. And uh, with Africa, with a growing population, and depending on the statistics that you want to look at, um, seven of the fastest, of the ten fastest growing economies in the world are in Africa. Mm. So they're huge opportunities. So we are focusing on growing beyond South Africa. As a result, in the past five years, we now have a presence, a footprint in more than ten economies. And we serve more than uh, 25 economies through third party um, uh, channels or the third party um, uh, partners that we work with. Give me an example, a <coughs> particular country that you're in, South Africa or another African country, and how you went into it, got established, and grew. Well, I think, you know, it's always a challenge. You know, if you're uh, a global company, you, you, you say um, to your global headquarters, you should be in Nigeria. And uh, they're like, uh, 
you know, all the indicators are looking red. And uh, then you be in, begin to build a compelling business case as to why you should be in a country like Nigeria. I mean, you look at the macroeconomic uh, factors, you look at the demographics, you look at the trends, where are things, where are things going? There is now stability. There's a growing population. The, our, our peer companies are going in there. Our customers are moving in there. Uh, those population that is growing has got a need for better food, for more nutritious food. They want the better things. The middle class is growing. Those are indicators that can help you build a very compelling business, uh, business case. How does a company like yours then go into a place which it doesn't know? By definition, it's not there. It's never experienced it. So on the one hand, it brings expertise. On the other hand, presumably it has to get people who do know the country has to enlist their help. Absolutely. So how did you go about that? Absolutely. I mean, one of the, the realizations that uh, you quickly come to as you try to enter new geographies with new product demands, with new unique needs, unique challenges, uh, with, 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 with very different value chain uh, dynamics, is that uh, you've got to have local knowledge. Mm. And every country that we've gone into, I've made it a point that we are employing local people with local knowledge, knowing no local culture, because the combination of our global capability and the local knowledge makes us very successful and sustainable in the local markets. Tell me how you've gone about it. I mean, do you go there? I mean, you, there must be a first time you get there, you, you get to the airport. Uh, with, where do you go first? Who do you speak to first? Who do you go to? Well, it's always a challenge uh, how, how you do that. Uh, but, I mean, there's always, uh, you, can, you, you, you can use local consultancy companies. You, you, we, we had a strategy that we, we, we no longer use now because we are bigger. But we had a strategy that we called a man and a dog. You know, you appointed a man and his dog to go and begin to, to uh, search out for opportunities. And, uh, and, and, uh, and then as you understood the market, mm -hmm. you then tried to build critical mass. You then tried to improve your talent uh, you in increase your infrastructure you you built your organization and uh, so that you could serve the the, the local market uh, in a better way and the fusion between bringing expatriates and using local talent uh, makes it a very powerful combination that can help you meet your objectives of growth in a, in a, in a, in a new geography of course people talk about Africa and your title is sub-saharan Africa but there's no such thing in a sense it's a geography but there are lots of countries, and each of those countries has its own issues, its own language, its own culture, its own obstacles, which are completely different to the others. So what, did we, what were some of the things that you found where you had to you go in and deal with an issue before you could get going? As I said to you earlier on, DuPont is a, is a global company. We, we're in more than 90 countries. We've got experience of working in different cultures. And uh, Africa is very unique in that, uh, you know, if you go from South Africa to Zimbabwe, you could almost experience a different business culture, yeah. a business, a, a, di a different tradition, and different t uh, 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 talent levels. Um, but one of the things that crosses, uh, uh, th that has helped us is that our approach is always been through to, to expand through uh, inclusive collaboration. Mm. We collaborate with local players to come up with local solutions to the challenges that they have. We bring our science and say, what else can we get from the local communities that helps us to combine and, 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 and build our business? I've got a list of all the impressive areas that you're in. So one of them, let's just take as an example, food security. Yes. And you've pointed out that Africa in the future is going to have to grow a lot more food for its people. Absolutely. South Africa, Africa the lot. Absolutely. So what are you doing in the food area? One of the things that I'm passionate about is to see Africa develop, Africa grow. And uh, we've made a difference, not only at a global level, not only at the macroeconomic level, we're making a difference to the man in the village. Not the man in the street, but the man in the village. Give me an example. And I'll give you an example. Yeah, of, of how you've made that difference. We've made that difference. I'll give you an example. In Malawi, there's a farmer, we now call him the magic farmer, and he's been on BBC, he's been on a, a, a few other channels where they've write, written about him. This farmer, he's got an acre of land. And using traditional methods and tra traditional seeds, open pollinated varieties of seeds. He was able to plant and he was harvesting maybe less than half a ton per hectare of land. But bringing to him science, bringing to him hybrid seeds we, and, and better farming uh, and methods, we have been able to transform and improve his yield sixfold through using better, better methods and better seeds. So is the implication that there was no one else doing this, or are you doing it better, or are you being more thoughtful about it? Uh, 
uh, there must be other companies who are also trying to do the same thing. There are many other companies. I think the biggest difference for us is that is, is the collaboration that we bring in, into, in, into it. We are able to work with local players because it's one thing to bring this universal science, but you've got to bring that universal science, work collaboratively locally so that this universal science can become local wisdom. You must have work. to overcome conservatism because people say this is the way we've always done it. Absolutely. How do you overcome it? It is, it is a continuous challenge. It is a continuous challenge that we face everywhere. Part of what we are doing as well, we are working with young farmers. We are putting money into training uh, courses, into training um, institutions for young farmers because they are more adaptable to new methods yeah. so that they can see. But one of the things that we do as well, using this farmer, for instance, who was able to improve his yield sixfold, we were able to use him as an example yeah. because seeing is believing. When they can see their crop and yeah. see his crop and see the difference, they are they are more amenable to, to adapt to mm. the new methods. Presumably you go to the United States occasionally and uh, they say to you, how are things going in sub-Saharan Africa? How are we doing? And what do you say? What are the measures where you've come from there to there? What are the measures that you like to use to say we're succeeding in Africa? Well, I mean, indeed we are succeeding in Africa. We've positioned ourselves as a, thought, as a thought leader in many spaces. The recent launch of the Global Food Security Index has helped us to begin to have high-level conversations uh, with objective information. It measures many factors around a country's ability to feed its population, for mm -hmm. instance. You know, can we make food more accessible, more affordable, more nutritious, more plentiful mm -hmm. for a population? And if we're not able to do these things, we are trying, beginning to measure why, what are the constraints? And whether you have a conversation with government, with academia, with NGO, we are using the same uh, mm -hmm. uh, hymn for, and, and we're using objective information to measure how we are doing on this. And from, from using this information, we are able to target areas that need to be improved and to make, uh, to make Africa a better, a safer, a healthier place for the current population, also for the generations to come. What sort of growth are you seeing in the company? Annual growth per year in terms of revenue, in terms of exposure? What are the measures there? Well, we, we may not talk uh, specifics, but we are seeing significant, uh, significant growth. You go to countries like Nigeria, you see the population, how that population is growing. Not only that, you, when you look at macroeconomic factors, greater stability, places like Ivory Coast, stability. Kenya, we just had an election and there was no violence. Zimbabwe, they just voted for a new constitution. You're seeing this improved stability across Africa. You're seeing a desire for better uh, you are seeing a desire to improve, mm -hmm. whether it is in the food space, whether it's in energy space, whether it's in environment conservation. These are areas uh, on which we can bring our science to bear and to make it, to make it better for, the, for, these, uh, for these geographies, for these countries. So we are seeing lots of opportunities for our, for our company as, 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 as we focus on key countries. In fact, what we've done at, at, at DuPont, we've looked and said, which are the most influential countries in, in, in Africa? We've said, when you look at the African GDP, 10 countries constitute 80% of Africa's GDP. And of those 10 countries, if you look at uh, how they're clustered, you see Southern Africa with SADC, you see uh, the Committee of Eastern African States with Kenya as the hub, you see Nigeria as the hub for West Africa, you see uh, Ivory Coast as the hub for Francophone. Mm. And we are focusing on these four economies, Nigeria, uh, Ivory Coast, Kenya, mm. South Africa, and say, let us build critical mass here. Mm. And as we build that critical mass, we are able to serve and take advantage of the opportunities presented in these neighboring states. Well, we'll have to pause there. We'll continue talking to Carl Moyer of uh, DuPont uh, right after.